So a real rarity that we have in our, uh, in our cycle, in our liturgy, again, Friday in the third week of Advent, we have readings for, for today, um, and we almost never celebrate Friday in the third week of Advent. We're usually within the last week of Christmas. So tomorrow, we kind of shift our focus and our attention on Advent um, from December 17th to the 24th on, again, those infancy narratives in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Um, so as you can see here, we have a passage from the Gospel of John. The church is really trying to grasp at to trying to figure out what reading to put in here to fill in some space um, for, for uh, the, you know, in the time being. So they give us a passage from John. It's in chapter 5, verses 33 to 36. So why did I mention the chapter number? Because chapter 5 in the Gospel of John begins with Jesus healing a crippled man on the Sabbath. So it's that famous passage where there was a guy that was um, by the pool of Siloam, I believe it's called. Or, uh, and uh, he's been there for like 36 years or something like that. It gives us, John gives us kind of an odd number. Um, and he's been laying there and he's, he could never get up to get into the pool in time when the waters would swirl around or something along those lines. And then so Jesus says to him, you know, rise, pick up your mat and walk. And the guy's able to do that. But the, uh, the religious leaders are very upset because he did this on the Sabbath, okay? So now Jesus goes into this testimony and kind of leads into today's gospel passage. Um, often in the gospel of John, we have kind of like a courtroom setting. So, you know, someone like Paul might appreciate this. So it's like set up like a trial, you know, and you have, you have the religious leaders who are the accusers, you have Jesus who's the defendant, and then you have all these witnesses. And the judge in this case is, is meant to be the reader, you and I. As we read the passage, we're meant to be kind of the judge. Make a decision for yourself. Jesus' testimony is the works of the Father. The Father is working within him. And so here in chapter 5, we have the beginning of this idea that when Jesus comes to reveal, he doesn't come to reveal himself as the Son of God. He's here to reveal his heavenly Father. Meaning that everything that Jesus says and does is actually an unveiling, a revelation of who God the Father is. Think about that. You know, when I was thinking about that yesterday, the passage that came to my mind was the raising of Lazarus. That when Jesus saw Lazarus lying there, Jesus then wept. And not just the little simple tear boo-hoo, but like this loud lament, outcry, burst of emotion. That's kind of what the Greek gives us the impression that he was doing. You know, almost like making a scene type of thing. And so that is what? The revelation of the Father and how he feels about the death of the human person. Boy, and just during the Christmas season here, during the season of Advent leading into Christmas, it just seems like God the Father will just not accept the fact that our lives are ending in death. We also hear in St. Paul about God's intention for us, even before the foundation of the world, St. Paul uses that word, which is often misunderstood, that word predestined. We were predestined to be as adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure. It's what the Father wanted. And so the death of the human person because of sin, our deaths, is not good enough for him. It's not what he wills. It's not what he wants. And that's what we're leading into here. God's doing something about this. And what he's doing is he's sending his beloved son and to take on all of our humanities and to, again, even go through that, that painful and gruesome process of death, he enters into it, experiences it, truly, really dies so that he can also overcome it, not only for himself, but for us. And it's the revelation, it's the will of what God the Father wants for us. May God bless you.